pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order. Boy, that seems like such such ages ago now, doesn't it? Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Anybody dialing in the phone can, by phone can press star nine. I won't do that, I'll just raise my hand in the picture, but others can press star nine to raise their hand and be recognized. People with video can click on the raise hand button at the bottom of their screen. Otherwise, I, that's me, will try to watch for real hands and gestures to recognize you. Muting when you're not speaking is recommended. Um, though we often, <laughs> though we more often try to speak before unmuting than we do, are interrupted by inadvertent background noise. Of course, with two dogs working things out, I don't know, Amber. Um, let's see. All right, and then we're off. So thanks everybody for coming. Um, so Darcy, I think you have the the shortest time with us tonight because again, we're having conflicting meetings. Um, so um, I'm wondering if there is a day that would work out better for us to meet um, so that, that you could maybe join us more regularly if you wanted to. Uh, Christine, I, I, I just asked a question of Darcy, but you waved your hand there, Christine, so I'm, I'm thinking- I'm sorry, yes, I you... was waving to somebody in my oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, I have, um... Uh, unfortunately, our our TSO meetings are, you know, they're on Thursday evenings at six thirty, and they're not on, you know, first and third or second and fourth. They correspond to the town council meetings. I could give you the list oh. of what our calendar is, and you could do the opposite weeks. I don't know if that would be good for you, but <clears throat> I could. Provide that if yeah, I mean that that's I mean, we're only we're only doing it twice twice a month, so um, um, I mean that would work for I guess we could just pick two uh, every month. Tracy, you have an idea. Um, two things. So Eve says she's in the waiting room, um, but I didn't see her there. Oh, or now she is, I guess. Oh, and Kim is stuck in the waiting room too. Can um Amber let them in? Here we go. Yay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, I think there's a delay when someone goes in there as to when it comes over. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just seeing them now. A few minutes. Okay. Um, also, I, in the TSO packet for this meeting today, right, there's a list of all the projected dates for the TSO meetings best on the council meetings. I mean, so if like if this time slot is good for people on Thursdays, Aaron, maybe we could just try to do the opposite weeks or. Yeah, but that, that would be yeah. fine for, for me. Um, <clears throat> I mean, originally we picked the sort of the the um, the, the first and third because that's, that's the easiest to schedule. It's the easiest for me to remember. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, um, uh, now that's, of course, uh, you know, I'm, I'm delighted to make our meeting so it's easy for Darcy to come to them and not, you know, run into a conflict with something else. It's not that I expect you to come to them, Darcy. I know that you're you're pretty busy, but we do appreciate it when you you stop in and 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 help us out. So, um, uh, so would that work for everybody? We have to go back and revisit our schedule anyway, I guess. I mean, Bruce. With me. I mean, don't we typically just do our meetings out, you know, like the next couple of meetings and what, if we know when the TSO is meeting, say the next two, three meetings, yeah, I mean, then that's, we can that's, just, I mean. That's how we end up doing it, but we started with the first and third. Um, right, well, our next, our next, just let me grab, I have a, I'm very low tech here. Um, <laughs> I have the next, the next meetings are um, uh, 
January, in the next year, it's January 7th, January 28th, February 11th, and February 25th are the ones in January and February. So, so we skipped three weeks there in January. So I think that you probably don't want to um, be the two middle weeks. Um, and so there'll be times when, you know, we may not coincide. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm, I'm amenable to whatever you want to do. I, you know, I, I, I feel kind of like you shouldn't necessarily schedule around me, but well, you want to. Uh, okay, fine. but I, I think I think I'd like to nonetheless. <laughs> I, okay. um, um, so so it, um, our next meeting um, is the seventeenth. All right, and we I have ours is also. Yeah, so so that one, that would be either the first one to move or skip. Because after that, then we start on the, the, then the seventh, which is yours. Um, Darcy, is your TSO meeting on the 17th starting at 4.30? No, 6.30. 6.30, thank you. Because I think I'm gonna go to that. Right, right. Oh, on the North Common, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had 4.30 written in my calendar. <clears throat> no, we, yeah. We've had a couple meetings at 4.30, but our regular is 6.30. Okay. <clears throat> um, so if we postpone our next meeting, really it's postponing to next year because I don't think there's a date after the 17th when um, we would be able to get together. Is this something that could be done um, like if we figure it out outside of the meeting just so we don't take up your time? Um, I can do a poll and see when everybody's available and then I can connect with Darcy and see I mean, and make sure, well, um, so Amber, yes, thank you. And um, if you would just put down the Thursdays that are not TSO meetings, uh, that would be great. Um, but um, I would like to work through, a, take our decision on the 17th, our next meeting. Would you guys, what about just meeting from five to 6.30? <clears throat> That would be fine with me. I, I do think we should meet on the 17th. Yeah. Okay. Um, all righty. So let, let's let's meet a half an hour early. And um, now if Darcy wants to join us again, uh, she, she can. Um, although I wouldn't be surprised um, uh, if she had to leave early to get ready for the next meeting, because uh, I know it takes me some time to wind up for these things. Yeah, I need to, I'll always need to leave by quarter after six. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, well th thank, thank you, Darcy. Thank you, everybody. That, that'll be, I think that'll work out very well. Um, I appreciate that. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't, I don't have any announcements, but I thought um, this might be the, a, a place to to slide in some news that I'm hoping that Tracy will share with us about her, her discussion with uh, the capital projects manager over at the university about changing the location of a bicycle, uh, a bicycle route sign. Um, the, the, uh, the reason um, this, this caught my interest and, and, and I appreciate Tracy bringing it to our attention is that um, uh, is the realization, and we've often stumbled onto this, that there are a number of important streets that are not um, in Amherst. They are in UMass, if you will. And so their, their design and um, you know, decisions taken about them, while they affect Amherst um, and, and Amherst, the Amherst community uh, directly, 
you know, we have no authority over them at all, except that UMass seems to be uh, willing to help out at some level at, at meet our requests. Um, so I thought this was an interesting case of that. So, so Tracy, I, I'm, I'm not, no, no, I'm not exactly surprising you with that question, okay. but uh, maybe with the context. Um, yeah, um, so, well, I mean, I'm a UMass employee and I live close to the UMass path. I mean, the UMass path between Amity and campus is a UMass state controlled road. It's not our road. Um, the project had just come to my attention just as somebody who walks and bikes and drives along that route that um, with the redesign, it's finally open to the public. And um, with the redesign, they had put up a few signs that directed people to get off the Arthur Swift extension and go onto the bike lane on road. Um, and then at the roundabout that's now at Fearing, they wanted cyclists to get off off the road at the roundabout and get back on the path and then after the path north of Fearing to get back on the road on the bike lane. The first section of the bike lane before Fearing, it has a buffer area that's painted and the bike lane after Fearing, north of Fearing does not. Um, anyway, it all seemed very complicated. In addition, there were some signs posted that basically said bike road sign this way, directing people to the bike lane and, um, and no bike, basically no bikes allowed otherwise. Um, it's sort of ironic just, you know, based on the history of that route and the idea that like the Arthur Swift extension was created as an extension from the Norwatok Rail Trail to access campus. Um, but the project manager, I did talk to her and I know some cyclists have reached out to her um, and that she's been very responsive about that. She said she's taken it under consideration to eliminate those signs. I mean, my sort of take on it is that um, cyclists who are comfortable on road should probably stay on road. They can be in the bike lane. They can go through the roundabout in the bike lane and, you know, until they get near campus and then they can take the, the route to the path to like the center of campus. Um, and on the southbound direction, there's also a bike lane, which I think that many cyclists won't use that. I mean, there are some cyclists I know who will turn left at university and Mass Ave like on left across path onto university at that like blinking light, but you have to be a pretty like confident cyclist to do that. And so a lot of people don't do that particularly. And there's also the Valley bikes right at the Southwest dorms where, you know, those cyclists are, are not, are more likely to be recreational cyclists are more less likely to have helmets and so on. So I don't think that all of them are gonna get on the bike lane, but they're just gonna stay. So um, yeah, but she seemed really receptive. Crazy. Tracy, what's supposed to happen at Amity? I mean, that was the part that really shocked me is like you're, if you're southbound, you're in this bike lane and then you get to Amity and there's just nothing and there's no direction right. about I what mean, you I mean, I think, do. I don't know, Guilford might know more about that, but I mean, yeah, they, that's, they, when that's I talked like to the, the program, not. when I talked to the program manager, she just said, the project manager, she just said that the state jurisdiction ends before Amity, right? And that it sounded like, there may have been some ideas. I mean, I've heard, you know, rumors of potential redesigns of the Amity University Drive intersection, but I've never heard progress about that. Again, Guilford might know more. I mean, it does, as somebody commutes to UMass, like there is a lot of backup there. There's, it's only one lane of traffic in each direction and there's a lot of backup when UMass is in session of cars trying to turn left onto Amity and it's only the one lane, right? So that's a big queuing area. Um, yeah. And I mean, over the years, right, there's been many redesigned plans for the University Drive section from Amity to Route 9. Um, some of that seems like it's happened like near the Big Y Plaza and so on. Um, and there's a whole bunch of projects development going in at Route 9, like including the expanded medical buildings on both sides of the road and the little rotary that's gonna be at South University Drive and like all those kind of things, as well as the redesign of Route 9 which I guess is slated for construction next summer, Guilford, with Route 9 from University Drive to South Pleasant with the bike lanes and the sidewalks. So, um, but in terms oh, of no. the other section, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's nice. I mean, so what the, the way is striped now is that, as Eve says, the bike lane going south towards Amity, it just ends, so. 
Yeah, so I don't know. It's an interesting question, and I hadn't expected to end up at it uh, about that Amity um, uh, University Drive intersection, which has kind of been a perennial subject that kind of, you know, it goes away. I mean, it's been identified as the culprit in a whole bunch of things like uh, the traffic through the neighborhoods that are trying to avoid, I, I see you, Kim, uh, the, the, the traffic that is trying to avoid that intersection by going through the neighborhoods, um, as well as, you know, just being a very ineffective and dangerous trans uh, um, intersection. I don't know, I hadn't thought about that, that if that's something you might want to to work on, put that on our project list, as there's no specific request uh, about it. Of course, we could get one pretty easily, but um, there it is. Oh, and and the jurisdiction, yeah, the jurisdiction is definitely, uh, and we got to be clear, there, there are three, uh, there are three entities that, that the three responsibilities here, the university is one, the state, and then the town. Um, I don't think they all meet exactly there, but those would be three different uh, bodies taking responsibility. So, so Kim. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Um, this is a, yeah, uh, um, Guilford roundabout. <laughs> um, well, and and yeah, this is a th this intersection is a conundrum because it's also like nobody really lives there, and you know I'm not sure anyone would write, but we all know that's a that's an issue that particular intersection, and not just for bicycles, obviously, or even pedestrians, but for everybody, that intersection is is a real issue so to you Guilford unmute <laughs> um uh and, and may, maybe so yeah I'm, I'm interested in, in, in Guilford's response as well because he's certainly uh more aware of the details of the history than than well than me yeah. um and uh but for us uh we're beginning to ask a question um you know, what, what do we do about it? Um, which I think is, is interesting. So Guilford. So the, the plans for that intersection are about, I'd say they're probably, they're done. They're hundred percent, they're a hundred percent done. Um, the state UMass, there's actually only two people, us and the UMass that are responsible. That, yeah. Um, UMass did the design when they did, uh, when they did their side of you drive um we were going to submit it for the mass works grant but then we submitted the one in the south instead so the plans are all done um it's just a matter of how to figure out where it's going to fit in the funding process and it is a roundabout <laughs> is it a mini roundabout or is it a real roundabout wow that's it's, exciting <laughs> it's, it's bigger than the one it's bigger than the Fearing Street roundabout, about the same size as the one on Triangle Street. Okay, so so it's it's not quite the, the many roundabouts that that we we just got a primer on recently. Well, I would say that the one on Fearing Street isn't a mini roundabout either, but the, yeah, I mean. <laughs> it is small. Um, yeah. All right. So so so. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, well. Good. Thank you. Um, it's um I, I i guess maybe i'm i'm mildly disappointed that we didn't get a chance to, to slip it onto our priority list but even that is being held in advance now <clears throat> so or do we put it on our priority list now guilford i don't know with our scoring system do we we can put it on the rank list it up now. there <laughs> Um, so Guilford, with the with the plans, what's happening with the private road that parallels University Drive? Is that involved at all with the roundabout, or is the roundabout not going that far? The private road stays. Oh, and yeah. is there any possibility that it might become a the bicycle route, the parallel bicycle route, like has been suggested in the past? Uh, no. Okay. There's too much, there, there's too many driveways and parking areas. I mean, Athena's, I mean, that's Athena's parking area is that area. 
Um, so you have a lot of conflicts there. The pot shop is going to have their, wait, one of the pot shops is going to have their parking in the, in that road too. And there's a whole bunch of businesses in there. There's three, there's three marijuana establishments in that inter, in that corridor. Yes. yes. That's the cool corner. All righty. Well, well, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> that was, uh, uh, that, I that mean, for the night. Well, yeah, it's not really an announcement. I guess my, I did, I mean, the project with the University Drive, it did sort of leave me with some questions, you know, as a UMass person, just about what review, like, their projects undergo and what kind of input they get from the public or others, right? It feels like sometimes the university isn't communicating so much with the town, but I was wondering if that extends to some of the construction work as well, and so, I mean, yeah. this project manager, when I've talked to her, and I know when people have emailed her because they've sent me some of their emails, like she's been super responsive. But at the same time, I'm sort of wondering how did, because in this few parts of the design I don't like, how did they happen? Like, did anybody say, like, don't put up this no biking sign there? And anyway, yeah, so this those is are kind yeah, of bigger, is, like, philosophical process questions. Yeah. Kim? But. Well, I've tried many times as, as a faculty and a concerned town member to interact with, you know, the planning people at, at UMass. And I happen to have like a really direct connection to Shane Conklin. And he still is like, who, who oversees all the projects at UMass. And he still like, just shoes me off to someone else and it never ends anywhere. And I'm like, guys, why wouldn't you want this me? this person who can interact with you and with the town. And I'm not sure why. I'm gonna to continue to investigate this, but it makes no, it's, it's nonsensical. So just, just um, a note, a side note or, or an observation um, on, on, on uh, sort of Tracy's interaction with, with uh, the university. And in it, we're not talking about big changes here, but they are nonetheless significant. And our interaction with the um, Mass DOT regarding the repairs on Route 9, uh, those have worked out very well. Um, so it, it's, I don't know um, what, what, the, uh, what the magic potion is, but um, um, maybe we should be one to establish a relationship directly with, um, um, with UMass. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to ask you, right. Guilford, if, if, if I'm getting too crazy here, if, if Route 9 was just too easy and, and, and now University Drive. Let's, let's, let, me put it, let me put it this way. In one instance, you're dealing with a state organization which is trying to appease the people in the, the people in the Commonwealth. And in another situation, you have a state agency, which is a large private business or public business trying to make its money and stay in business. Okay. I guess That's it's up to us to decide which is which, but okay. But. Well, yeah, and, and, and I guess either or both, um, you know, it, it's, it's effective to communicate or deal with them if, um, with clear sort of wealth organized and understanding their side of the the um, uh, the issues you know directly I mean that that's kind of feels like what happened we need this and here's why and here's why it's good for us both so we, we get we get the upper level view of what they do to their roads we get the very upper level view of how they're changing them what they're going to do but that's all we get um, they do things on our roads they don't even tell us about until we start doing it so <laughs> um, that, that's the lower level stuff they just kind of just do it but I know like Aaron, right, you had reached out to the university about, or we talked about just with, I mean, the U, U, University Drive project, it makes me just think about, you know, like Lincoln Avenue or like other projects that we've talked about that it seems like there could be changes there on the university end. And I, I seem to recall that you had written a letter or we had talked about like reaching out just so to be kind of kept informed or find out like what's happening. I mean, I feel like with the University Drive, I mean, just as the first thing I became aware of it is when the road was open and I saw it like in action, right? So 
Yeah. It makes well, me kind I, of wonder about other university projects a little bit, but. Yeah, I think since the universe, since the universe has changed um, and since March that I, I don't know if Guilford might be the, the, the point of contact the university looks to and I, um, when in, in working with the town on, on these things. Um, Lucky Guilford, I guess. We, like I said, we get we get the bigger picture of what they're doing, but um, unless it's going to tie into a town road, we don't get the final details. Yeah, and I guess that's been my frustration all along is that, yes, a lot of their work doesn't actually touch our roads, but um, the 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 way their modifications move traffic around. That does, because then the traffic ends up, for instance, on Lincoln Avenue, because nobody thought that, oh, putting the parking lot there is going to drive people a little bit further up. Oh, having a crummy intersection down here is going to move people on the, on the strong, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant it. Um, so, Gil, who, who is your main um, connection at UMass? Same as yours. Okay, I, I'm going to talk with him again well and so he's not he, gonna he, like this voice that i use so it's fine it's it's, it's uh, yeah this yeah, is not okay. something but we're is, different you and i are different you and i are in, in different positions you know so, yeah but um he's gonna give you the same thing but you have to understand that he is not the top of the food i know chain. yeah i understand yeah um and and actually so what i'm i'm going to wonder out loud is whether an entity like let's say the TAC which has a different voice not not one of uh, authority or uh, but one of knowledge and one of of capability would be I mean ju just a member of the TAC going to you know, the project manager for this thing had the effect that we need it. Uh, but if there was a, um, a, a safe body to, to, for instance, share future plans and maybe to get ideas, um, I, I'm wondering if that isn't uh, an effective mechanism that we might propose. Uh, Tracy. Hi, so I had reached out to some of the people I work with about the project, like including people I thought might have, you know, have some insights, like who've worked on roundabouts and done roundabout research and things. Yeah. Um, and one of the faculty members I spoke with told me that they had reviewed the preliminary plans for the design on University Drive before it was completed. So, I mean, there is, and I remember from back when I was on the Public Transportation and Bike Committee, like that there was a UMass committee like with Albion and some other people and they met mm -hmm. periodically and I don't know exactly what their function was because I wasn't invited to those meetings. I didn't work at UMass then, but it seems like there is some kind of review and I've been trying to get some answers from that faculty member <laughs> about like how that, yeah. how to well, tap yeah. into that. And I haven't heard back from them yet, but I mean, I will. Um, and even before today's TAC meeting, I said, I think this is going to come up at TAC. If you have any kind of insights into it, um, let me know. Yeah, and, and historically, um, like uh, the, the PTB, PTC, whatever it was, um, did have, well, a role to play with uh, uh, figuring out the, um, the roundabout at, that, that exists at the other end of campus, that, that design actually, you know, they spent some time helping us understand it and understanding what we needed um, uh, there. And that's worked out pretty well. So, uh, all right. Um, Quick question. Um, yes. Could there be signage put up uh, into, uh, presumably the town project will not be done in the next few weeks to redo that intersection. Could there be signage put up? Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, you know where the bike lane just ends about which where bikes should go um i, I think that uh you might drop a note to public works to get that that into the hopper i mean it's something that that um makes we, sense but uh, you know that that's uh guilford we have to talk to umass about that Oh, that's that's far enough on their side of the line. 
Yeah, the, the basically the the line for the intersection is about 10 feet from the pavement at AME Street to the north. I mean, I guess so one question on the southbound because that's where the bike lane ends is the like how what percentage or how many cyclists are going to be using the bike lane as opposed to staying on the path. Like it seems like a lot of the traffic is going to be on the path and even when I talked to some cyclists who said they would use the bike lane that they would probably still like merge back like at you know at I don't know maybe near like the Mullen Center I mean sorry the football stadium you know back onto the path or something I mean the path is the most direct route like that's what's been there historically including for people connecting to the rail trail and most of the time the volume is not that high like where a lot of cyclists are going to come off the path like across the street and there's no there's no arrows or anything to get cyclists who are on the path like leaving campus onto the bike lane on the southbound direction so I think the most of the traffic will stay on the path but with the bike lane ending it would be nice to have something but yeah 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 all right I um so so thank you thank you for that uh Tracy as <laughs> um I would like let's see we don't have any hearings Oh, so Amber had news on minutes. Um, I didn't have it. Uh, oh, her pace has disappeared from my, my screen here. Kimberly. Um, I have to leave in 10 minutes, just so you know, because I'm filming my daughter who is doing a variation for the Nutcracker on for the Merry Maple. So I know what I'm going to be doing um, tomorrow night. I, I, I get it's going to it, so. Uh, where, where is it going to be streamed? Wait, where can we watch this, Kim? Um, I it, it, on all the town sites and the BDI the BDIC every place has it. It starts at five o'clock, and it's going to be a great like little production. So watch it. Sorry, I right. have to plug in. Sydney's doing the. Sydney's doing it alone, Eve. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Wait, does but... she have her tiara? Did you find a yes, tiara? She has a, yes, someone someone gave me a tiara, which I asked our community for. And um, and she's amazing. And I know I'm biased, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> no, that, no I, I, I thought you were going to be late because of that, not not leaving early, but that, that's either way. So uh, no problem. Th thank you very much. And, and how exciting. Um, and that's a mini video, saying, Kim. <laughs> so what I was saying otherwise was that uh, I, I guess Amber has, has mastered another piece of, of um, uh, software and is putting together minutes. And I, I just wanted to have, have a chat with her about that. And I don't know if, if it would be helpful. I mean, I'm happy to offer some editing time because it sounds like it's a very um, editing heavy process and really um, uh, they're, 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 they're only elements of our discussion that, that really I think are valuable to record. We're not required to record a lot of it, but recording all of it is also too much. Um, so I don't know if, if, if offering help is uh, helpful or if she's just gonna slog through that on her own. And, um, and she disappeared, so I, I can't I can't find it from her unless that's her ringing in. She, she had no, to that's... do a child thing right now. She had to go pick up a kid. So she maybe. turned, Gil, Guilford is the host. She made Guilford the host. Oh, lucky Guilford. I have to serve tea. Yeah, yes, please. No, Amber did figure it out. She's just working through it. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. It gives you all the information, but it doesn't like certain things. Like it doesn't like my name. So it, when you guys talk about me, it doesn't talk about me. So she's having to put those back in, but she should have the first set for the next meeting probably. Yeah, and will we, uh, would it help if we somehow or other disposed of ourselves a little bit differently, maybe speak more slowly or louder or without this crazy accent? No, everybody has to speak English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
no, it's just, it's just, it just takes time. Okay. And, and, and our audio from our individual machines is okay. And all that other good stuff. It, it's, it's, these are important. It's like, you know, if we can help out, that'd be great. No, it's, it's just the AI that picks up the different things. Um, it doesn't like numbers either. So it makes numbers oh. something else. Okay. <laughs> um, upcoming projects, anything new on the project front? Yeah. I mean, we, I'm sorry, who, was that, was that you, Eve? No. Sorry, um, my other phone is leaving a message. It's from the state of Massachusetts, so there's noise in the background. I apologize, it'll finish soon. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to say full disclosure is that I'm, um, as former TAC member, trying to keep up with notes and um, writing up what's going on in the TAC for the Indy. Um, and I'll be trying to do that each week, although it's pretty hard to get myself motivated to do it between Thursday night and Friday night when it needs to get in for their weekly indie. But if Oof. that's helpful to the Amber, she's welcome to look at my write up, right? And then and then use it to inform her summary. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, upcoming projects. <laughs> um, and, and the the the, uh, the intention of this is that as 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 we move along, and 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 you know the world comes back to life when these vaccines begin to roll out and everything that, uh, while there seems to have been a sort of a quiet period with with people looking for you know intersection changes and stop signs and speed bumps and all those things that they they look for that this would be the time to slot. Uh, mentioning them, talking about them, getting a, a look ahead, um, some intelligence on what's coming up. And uh, I don't I don't know of anything. We almost put Amity Street onto it, but uh, otherwise, is, is there anything, Guilford, that you, that you can think of? Tracy's thought of something, I'll ask her next. Um, the only thing that's really being worked on right now is the grant that the planning department has, and Chris can probably talk to you more about that. You mean the Mass Works grant? No, the downtown grant. Streets. So we're working on a grant with the state, um, Mass DOT, and um, it's called Share, Shared Streets and something. Anyway, we, we did get a grant for $129,000 um, in the summer to do some work and it, it, it was mainly supportive of downtown dining. But now we're trying to figure out um, what we should apply for in the second round. The state I think has $10 million to dole out and we could get as much as $300,000 I think. So one idea is to um, try to build part of North Common um, and that would mean building possibly the sidewalk on the South Pleasant Street side of the North Common and possibly redoing the sidewalk on the north side, which includes a bus stop. So that's one idea. Um, the building commissioner also has an idea about um, doing some improvements to the to South Pleasant Street on the west side of South Pleasant Street in front of the restaurants where Oriental Flavor and Fresh Side and Veracruzana is and making it more inviting and possible for dining in the location, but no decisions have been made about exactly what we're gonna be applying for. But I think we'll probably be putting that application together um, towards the middle or end of December. I think it goes in the beginning of, of January. Um, and Guilford has a lot of input on that. So um, as I said, we haven't really decided anything about that. And will that be uh, um, funding for for planning or designing or, or construction? Which uh, what's that for? It would be planning. It would be construction. Um, Guilford and his team would do whatever planning and design is necessary, and then uh, we would use the money for construction. So the most likely thing at this time, I think, is um, improvements to the edges of the North Common. But there are some other ideas being floated out there. Excellent. Now that, that's that's all very exciting. I have to say that uh, when the when the Jersey barriers went up and were unpainted, that was really not terribly inviting. But after a while, it's it was kind of nice that uh, we took back so much of that street for us and not yeah. not cars. So uh, well, that's that's exciting. Tracy, you were you were trying to get a word in edgewise at the end there. Oh, you have to push the mute button again. 
Well, and I also appreciate that unlike Northampton, we didn't rip ours up, like get rid of ours. <laughs> right? so, that was good. Um, so uh, just with the pro the list of projects is like, I always feel like the list of projects has kept with Guilford, right? And that he pulls up the list for us at meetings, like on a spreadsheet. And as we looked at the last meeting, he pulled it up in real time, you know, that the list hadn't been added to in a while. Um, but it seems well, like yeah. some other projects might have come in. Like, I just, you know, I just have heard, you know, other different concerns being raised or something. And, and I have a few different versions of the list, like in the, you know, in my files from previous meetings, like there was like kind of like the little projects list, which is more just citizen requests, some of which are never going to rank necessarily high enough to actually get implemented, but we're just keeping track of them. And then there's kind of the major lists, you know, if we're looking at like, say, you know, and even I and the Bruce have been working with the prioritization plan, you know, realistically, like we're probably only going to have one to two projects a year or less, right? So like in terms of the bigger projects, how long does it take to like move everything, all the priorities along and so on. But it did make me wonder, you know, just if it does still feel to me like there's some different lists and people are keeping sort of different information if there's one kind of central place or one central document where all that could be. But then also if there would be a way to have a publicly accessible version of that um, just so one, you know, in the name of transparency, then so everybody could sort of see that these are the projects, similar to C click fix or something, but um, just, you know, so the public could see like this is the list of projects that have been under consideration, you know, some of them have been on the list a really long time, say like East Pleasant Street, um, and some of the other projects. And then it would just be a way to that any of us could access it at any time and any citizens could access it at any time. And I don't know, it's just an idea, but one yeah. to have like one list, but then also if there's a publicly accessible version of that, like not to make it editable or anything, but just something that, you know, now so much stuff is in the cloud, like can it just be like a link in the cloud that the public can see or something? So, so Kimberly. Oh. I was also wondering, maybe, I mean, Sometimes these things get a little complicated, but perhaps every six months we could publish our list, you know, and up update it every six months, which doesn't seem too burdensome. No, I mean, that would be an alternative version or something. Just yeah, so one there. Yeah. I have yeah, to go. So, I'm sorry. Bye. Uh, yeah, go, go, okay. goodbye. Good luck. Break a leg. Oh, no. Is that, the right, is that the right thing? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, <laughs> and, the, and, uh, which can... so where, where we where this has been in the past and and um well we, we i think we should think about this definitely it, it certainly it wraps into our discussion about the charge but um thinking about that one of the things that we took out of our charge was that comprehensive um you know keep track of everything that's ever asked of public works to do and, and and that's a that's certainly something that i don't think we should should be doing um uh, but short of that, we broke our list into three pieces, if I remember, and uh, just revisiting those. Uh, this may have been just before your time, Tracy, as I think about it. Uh, but there was the, there was the active. These are projects that are are funded. Um, these these are major projects, and mm -hmm. I can't remember how we decided major, that are funded and are going to be worked on. And here's here's the funding source, and here's the funding year. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah. And then there were the, the oh, I have it. See, this is the is big list. Yeah. So this yeah, was from one it. of our meetings. This was February. Yeah. It says updated February 2019. Which this was the big list. Yeah. That was, and then that was, and then in the meeting we also had this separate spreadsheet which I call the little list, which is yeah. like all the. So so yeah. I think I think I'm I'm happy to revisit those, um, especially when we have a, a a clear understanding about what our responsibilities will be because I don't want to take responsibility for everything that we have no authority on but th th be that as it said so the the the, the reason I put this particular note uh, on the agenda this this particular item which is not making lists or updating how we take in projects and how we're going to keep them track and organize them is that um, the, the Pomeroy intersection was an interesting thing to learn about and I wanted to sort of to set aside a time to, to put our heads together and, and 
maybe ask Guilford to say, hey, well, what is it out there that we might want to just just get onto into one of these processes? And also, you know, Christine is going to give us a give us heads up. This is a, a sort of the intelligence gathering moment, and we'll visit those the idea of how we track it eventually. Absolutely, um, Tracy. Thank you. So, so Guilford, how how are we doing? Good. You're doing great. <laughs> So we got we got a big work downtown, and and I'm wondering also um, as a, out of the 40R meetings, um, I'm recalling that a piece of the 40R um, is dependent on um, on uh, access to transportation. Uh, when you when you draw the line, you have to draw it in a spe special way that includes transportation. I'm wondering if there's anything about that effort. Um, in downtown Amherst that we might want to think about and be aware of. The 40R, may I answer that? Yes, please. <laughs> I hope so, because I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so the 40R is an overlay zoning district that's um, al allowed or authorized by the state for towns and cities to adopt. Um, it includes um, the, the right to make uh, developments that are denser than what are allowed by zoning. It includes um, the requirement to include affordable housing, and it potentially includes a payment from the state to a city or town for additional units over and above what is normally allowed via the zoning bylaw. Um, the planning board and the CRC, the Community Resources Committee, are really, you know, trying to decide is 40R something that we want to do? And there are members of the planning board who are really excited about it and other members who are much more lukewarm. Um, the CRC is kind of waiting to hear from the planning board about what they wanna do. So it's, I don't think it's anything that's going to be coming up really soon. And when it does come up, it's really going to be um, proposed in areas that already have public transportation. In fact, that's the, that's one of the requirements that you're supposed to um, have these developments in places where you already have public transit. So in the downtown, we have bus routes. Um, in any of our village centers, we have bus routes. So I'm not sure at this stage of kind of conceptual uh, planning, whether the TAC would have much input. Once we get down to the nitty gritties and decide exactly where this thing is going to be if we want to do it, then, um, you know, the tech might have some input, but right now I, I don't think that they would. Yeah, no, I wasn't, I wasn't sort of worried about, about the input so much as uh, the question as to whether it might be appropriate or something that we need to think about. It's a project that's a, it's something pretty exciting about redeveloping, planning the downtown. And I remember it had a transportation component um, transportation, in this case, public transportation. So uh, that's why I bring it up. So, so thank you. Uh, so um, as a segue, the, yes, Chris, Chris. Because we're in the state of upcoming projects. So yes. That, you know, we're always um, fishing around for money. And our town was recently designated a housing choice community. This is the second time in the last five years that we've been designated. Um, and the reason that we were designated is because we've produced more than 500 dwelling units in the last five years. So the state is really pushing cities and towns to um, develop more dwelling units because they need the units to house, you know, lots of new uh, workers. Anyway, um, so we got the housing choice designation. Therefore, we have access to up to about $300,000 worth of funds. And the um, planning department and I think Guilford's staff is putting their heads together. And the thing that seems to make the most sense is to try to complete the mill lane extension, the, the extension of the mill lane sidewalk from Route 116 to Groff Park. It's really, um, it's kind of all part of a picture. We have um, low income housing development down there. It's not affordable with a big A, but it's affordable with a little A. A lot of low income people live along East Hadley Road in the housing developments. So um, we put money into CDBG money, community development block grant money, into building a multi-use path 
along East Hadley Road that gets us as far as the intersection of 116 and East Hadley Road. But then there's no good connection across 116 to Groff Park. And we've already put um, several hundred thousand dollars worth of improvements in Groff Park. And we would really like to be able to make those improvements accessible to the low income people who live at South Point and the Boulders, et cetera. So um, we are currently working on putting together a housing choice grant application, which I think is due this coming Friday to, um, to extend the Mill Lane sidewalk. We have some money from, I think CDBG from last year, but we don't have enough to build the whole thing. So that's one thing that we're working on and we're hoping to get that money and we could get as much as $300,000 for that. And then the other thing is we're, um, currently looking at projects that we can apply for for 2021 for community development block grant. And um, they're mainly interested in doing uh, capital projects in areas where um, the, there's a preponderance of low income people. So one of the possibilities is to um, rebuild part of the sidewalk on the north side of Kellogg Avenue that would serve the people of Clark House and um, the Ann Willen apartments. There are other ideas for using that CDBG money as well. And I'm sure Dick has been in conversations with Dave Zemeck and Nate Malloy, who are most familiar with that. But I just wanted to mention that, that we're, we're trying to get some money to, um, to do some infrastructure improvements, to use that CDBG money. Um, these are things that don't always um, come into the public realm. You know, they're they're kind of things that staff works on. We have a general sense of what's needed based on work that the TAC has done based on past work that DPW has done. And when we see an opportunity, you know, we go and try to grab some money to get things done. So that's, that's all. Excellent. Yeah, I recognize these, these projects. I mean, we've talked about that West Street uh, Mill Lane intersection um, and had some ideas that Guilford presented to us and we, we endorsed and, and, and pointed at. So Tr Tracy. Yeah, I had a question about the Mill Lane project is so like one of the things that's come up at past meetings, and I think Kim brought up some issues too, just about the, the traffic signals like there that it's like complicated with the traffic coming off of East Hadley Road. Yeah. And then so, I think Mill Lane is not actually a signal. Is that right? That it's actually just. Yeah, the signals at East Hadley Road. It, that, yeah. That and then signal, just right. kind of. Uh, yeah. But so I don't, if, so if I don't, it sounds your, like, would that be part of the project or the project would focus on the sidewalk piece of it? The project would focus on the sidewalk. The project right. would be the crosswalk yeah. that would go across 116 where East Hadley Road comes into West Street. And then it would go across that little bridge. Mm -hmm, right. Green yeah. building that is really- that, a, That's a house, right? Yeah, but so, is, that's yeah. Yeah. so if you look at, if you look at the, the big, project list you'll see or, or the, it's on the there future yeah. big project it's, it's on there right and i right. would take it for granted that the um the crossing and the whatever hardscape is put down to to get people safely from the west side to the east side or, or east side to west side of west street or south southern street depending on where the crossing is um would um stay out of the way of future improvements that would make, you know, sort of the rest of the improvements that the CDBG money can't support right now. And that that's, that's cool. So. Oh, yeah. And so on Kellogg, so is the project just from like Ann Willen back towards um, North Pleasant? Because there's also that section at Kellogg where there's not really a sidewalk, right? So if you keep going towards the high school, there's a little, it's like a, it's a major pedestrian corridor for a lot of people, but it's just like a line on the side. It's like a shoulder line or something. So this would probably be an, um, an ability to get people from Ann Whalen and Clark House to the post office. Oh, and got it. Okay, got it. Yeah, and the bus and everything. And yes, right. And got it. The, the um, so the one project I had flagged on our list of projects, and that we had come up and I we talked about it. Some is also pot wine in one sixteen. Like, is there still thing? Is that still on the big project, little project list, or somehow it seemed like it had gotten moved up? That there had been concerns about that with yeah, the, that's on the big bus stops on the crosswalks, and is there a time frame for that one? 
<laughs> and that, is that's that and so, now is that a roundabout too, maybe or something? Okay. <laughs> well, I, so and that's that's an that's a it's an interesting point because um, things like that, you know, we've been able to put them on the list, and if something comes along like this this funding because because we're right. we're a good place to live and people want to give us money to help it, you know, make it better for those. You know, we can plug them in. So that's that's a that is a real value, I think, that we're bringing to the table. So I mean, at, Paul, at a place like Potwine and you know West Street, wouldn't a I mean, rather than talking about roundabouts and you know changing the the traffic lanes, why not put a, a pedestrian bridge over? I mean. If we're trying to take the pedestrians out of the roadway, take them out of the roadway and put them up in the air. You'd have to um, make it kept accessible. And the, oh, yeah. I mean, they, they can be. They can um, be, but they're enormous. It's cheaper well, to so, put the so, roundabout in. Yeah, it probably yeah. is cheaper. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's cheaper. I mean, it's just like, yeah. I mean, yes. I come from so, so a country I, with I, lots of those sort of things. Yeah, I have to have to confess to grinning a little bit on this because this is an idea that's been brought up in a lot of places, and um, the design and the implementation is often so much ex more expensive that either nothing happens or something lesser. But that would really be cool. I've seen some beautiful pedestrian bridges, you know, with with you know stay cables and and the, and the likes of that. We well, don't need to go that um, crazy. I mean, just a little bit of concrete here and there will be fine. But well, you yeah, a bit of a ramp. But yeah, they're very they're very difficult, and um, uh, and I'm not sure that they work that well. I've, I've understood that people are not comfortable with them. Yeah. I don't know. Um, whatever, maybe so. people who think that the sky's falling, but that's about yeah. It. <clears throat> so oh. well, you know, if the earthquakes that happen around here too, it's, you want to be caught up on that one of those. <laughs> well, I mean, people have been talking about crosswalks there, but you'd also you need to have something besides crosswalks. Like crosswalks alone do not solve it right no no right. I, no no, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's that's part of what we understand and you need the crosswalks as well so and they should be at least like flashing or a light or something but right or or, or maybe i don't i don't know what the what they're thinking but maybe they're going to be bringing the traffic across on the uh, on the um the north side of the mill river there instead of running it down the west side mm -hmm. of west street or whatever so Yes, Eve. So just, I wanted to ask some specific follow-up. So um, Guilford, can you clarify what, what exactly is the status of what's happening at, um, at that intersection? Because I know people went out and measured it. Like, is the status that we're just waiting for a grant to show up? Or is the status that there's a survey? Or what is, what's, what's what, yeah. At Potwine, do you mean? Yeah, at Potwine. Yeah. It's just in a concept right now. Every Everything, I mean, there's only there's only so much money and so much time and what's gotten pushed to the front of the, what's been getting pushed to the front is the main intersection at Pomeroy and um, West Pomeroy, Pomeroy and 116. Right. That one's going up to the front and going to get the major attention well, that, for the next couple of and, months. Yeah. And, and, that's, that's, and that's going up to the front because it got funded. Is that yeah, right? So Someone and then because them. it got funded, that means it requires staff time and energy basically. Yeah, it means it's got to get designed. It's got to get pushed a lot faster. That'll probably be your next, if, if you, depending on how the committee holds together and what you're doing, that'll probably be something you're, you're tasked with doing something with soon. Well, now, so, okay. and what's so, the status? I'm sorry, Eve, go ahead. So for, for the pot wine one, um, it's in concept right now. So basically, as soon as staff has time, you'll go back to trying to think about what might be done there. Is that the idea? Right. We actually, we broke it down to three phases. We got the cheap phase, we got the intermediate phase, and then we got the thing behind me phase. Yeah. <laughs> so what it, does the nice phase backup. mean options? Yes. Okay, so it's not like stages of the plan. Well, actually, the way we have it laid out is we can build it in stages so that eventually you end up with the roundabout. But what you've done, the previous ones fit into the roundabout design as it goes along. Uh -huh. Oh, great. So uh, do we have any sense of when that first phase might be able to go forward? Um, 
after way probably after we get done with uh, West Street and Pomeroy. Okay. West Street 116 Pomeroy. Yeah, okay, so this, and then, this sounds um, like a good place to put in a plug for you for extra hands for you, Guilford, huh? Um, just, I mean, to make the committee work work better. I mean, the reason we don't have the list on the web uh, posted anywhere is because we're supposedly changing our website, um, and we haven't got to that yet, so we haven't put new stuff out there. But then again, keeping the list up once we do, that's, yeah, I mean, talking to people about, you know, a half-time person to help manage the requests and stuff would be good to move this along and keep it up to date. Yeah. Tracy. Well, I mean, in some committees, right, like, to, you know, a lot of committees I see, they have like a list of kind of upcoming projects that they, as Kim said, you know, every six months, it could even be like in our quote packet or whatever, you know, and then people could also access it that way and it could go on our page or something. Um, I did have a question about the status of, um, cause I noticed, you know, from our last agenda, right. It was talking about East Pleasant street too. And so some people have been asking about what's happening with East Pleasant and um, doing the survey there related to like the sidewalks and so on. So East Pleasant's in the queue. It's um, North Pleasant, which is the one you voted as the bigger priority, is actually going forward a little little faster. And actually, what you guys saw in the previously is kind of what we're pushing out to the public soon. And then we'll start trying to get things laid out to actually do work on North Pleasant um, this summer. So for North Pleasant, you're talking about the section from the North Roundabout on campus, like up towards. The north, Thanks. the center of Thanks. North Amherst. Yeah. Okay. So I don't remember ever voting that North Pleasant was a higher priority. I remember voting that they were both our two highest priorities. But you said that North Pleasant was ahead in the queue, which I believed you. Um, but I don't think we ever said it was a higher priority. You actually voted that one before you voted the <laughs> East Pleasant one. So it was chronologically. Yeah, we went, we went for chronologically. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I, so, I, when do you expect the um, East Pleasant survey to start? Sometime this spring. So, like well, with April, gets May, kind of thing. Yeah. Hopefully, we we have a lot of surveying that has to be done now. Um, Pomeroy and one sixteen is going to get the the first of it, and then it's going to move around quickly to some other projects. If the CDBG work is funded, then we have to move the surveyor over there and do some surveying along the Mill River. And then we'll go from, we'll work our way back. So um, thinking, of, thinking of that and thinking of synergies, will there be survey work on the, uh, the bridge over the Mill River where West Street goes over? Uh, we have to survey the, the river front and the bank, top of bank and that stuff, yes. Yeah, so does it make sense uh, you know, with that idea of synergy in, in mind to, to sort of expand that survey a little bit to catch what corners and things that we might need to understand the um, the the, uh, the safer crossing that, that Chris is mentioning we're going to be doing, and maybe even beyond that to get sort of the, the groundwork for the, the um, uh, improved intersection that we're fascinated uh, sort of fantasizing about. Or is that is that is that so tightly held together that um, the answer would be no? The answer is always possible. <laughs> well, okay, okay. We we try oh, to hey. we do try to mush things together as much as we can. We actually yeah. have a third thing we're trying to do at Potwine <laughs> or Mill Mill and West Street. There's a third thing we're trying to do, which we haven't really talked about because it's more of a maintenance thing for us. So yes, there's going to be a lot more going on in that little area. How how is that um, pedestrian bridge still safe? Uh, that's the third thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I wanted to spend some time. Well, this this is your moment, Guilford. You're you're going to do the magic trick. I'm going to ask you to do the magic trick now. Um, I'm hoping that you. Oh yes, Eve. You had one, uh, you had some... Before you move on to the next agenda item, the subcommittee just wants to say one thing about future project discussions. No, but if you're still talking about projects, go ahead. And no, we're, I was going to I was going to go on to work on the pedestrian plan, but uh, um, oh, and, and okay. I think... So, so you, the, yes, um, you is want... Chris still here? Yes. 
I am here. Uh, okay, but great. She's just getting a cup of coffee, so she turned her screen off. Oh, that's good. So Bruce and Tracy and I met yesterday and um, talked again through sort of our whole process to develop the prioritization plan. And last time we met, we said that, you know, we sort of came up and decided we really needed some technical assistance to finish it up. So we would like an opportunity two weeks from now to um, tell you guys a little bit more of where we are and what kind of assistance we want. But um, Chris, we thought since you had mentioned the idea of going to the um, PVPC that that might be a possibility. We're really, we don't know if there's someone at the PVPC, but if, oh, uh, if there's someone who's worked on, um, you know, systems of, um, the level of service matrices and how those play into point scoring systems. We really want someone who's got some experience having worked with that kind of system before um, and to help us sort of do each of those steps and make them talk to each other, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I think what I said earlier was that um, PVPC comes out with these DLTA um, grant you know, requests, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, RFPs or whatever, but um, they are specific to certain topics and they might have like three topics a year or five topics a year. And if you can fit your project into one of those topics, then you have um, a greater chance or a chance of getting this technical assistance. So I haven't seen a PV PVPC uh, request or proposals yet. Um, they usually come out in December and they're due some kind, sometime in January and then we'll work on them throughout the next year. So once I get that, I'll have a better sense of whether some of the things that you are trying to do would fit into their, um, their whatever topics that they're working on this year. That's okay. great. So, so um, Aaron, for the agenda for next time, can we put those two things into an agenda item as a package? Yeah, so so Tracy, I'm going to ask you to send me a note for that. And good, thank you. And then I'll, I'll that that will make sure I'll get it in right. Um, and and make sure you get it in. So all right, thank you, Eve. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Guilford. Oh, and Bruce. Uh, Bruce is on our subcommittee too. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce well, I well, no, I but I had to pick someone uh, to to to, to <laughs> and so maybe is it Bruce who's going to send me the letter? Bruce, I would you decide. But I just I just would like a note from 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 one of you to to um, um, uh, a correspondence to kick me in the shins. It's it's good for me. Um, I'm hopeful that um, you all had a chance to to go over the the stuff that Amber sent us on the pedestrian and bicycling plan. Um, it brought back memories. I have to say I hadn't realized. Um, how much work we put into that and, and how far we got, um, including uh, the uh, the rating. Uh, I remember the rating system, but not that we had gone that deeply into it. Um, all of that said, um, I'm I'm delighted that um, I'm delighted that to be getting ready to roll this out. I, I really think it's a very it's a nice piece of work, um, and want to would like to get this last little piece tidied up and sent out and, and so we can put it all together and say le voila and um and, and turn it out and send it out into the wild um it can do it has the potential for doing a lot of good that i can see and that's that would be that would be nice tracy um, so i just have a a few process questions about this so the the bike and i mean the pedestrian and bike network plan right it's now i think it was finalized in 2019, but a lot of the work was done in 2018 and we're almost in 2021. Um, and so I know when the original plan, I wasn't on the TAC then and Marcus wasn't on the TAC then. Um, I know when the original plan came out, there was like a public review a little bit, um, but I don't know, you know, now that it's been a few years and so on, if it needs to, before things are finalized or for example, before the council if we wanted the council to adopt the plan formally, if there's a value added to that, like whether there would need, whether it would benefit from having a chance for like public review and comment again before saying it's finalized. Like on our agenda, it said a final. And yeah. so I don't know if, are we gonna be at that stage? 
Are we going to get well, that done in 10 minutes? But yeah, th this, this so. is part of the, um, the thing that I promised to, to, to send you all and, and, and haven't, I'm sorry. Um, our preface, uh, part of our preamble talks just about that, how this is, this is a snapshot, this is gathering, and um, that part of what we envisioned our role at that point, and I think we're going to re-envision our role now, is to, uh, as opportunities present themselves, to, to forward the plan and the, the um, issues that are identified and the solutions that are identified in the plan, bring them up to date. Um, we have to stop. I mean, the, the report is done. They've done the research. They found what they found. They've, they've, we've learned what we've learned um, to get to that point. And yes, time has gone on. And yes, there have been requests and there have been more accidents and there's been more stuff that would have changed the new report if we did it again. But we can't do that. We, you know, this is it. And uh, really what we were asking is that, hey, here it is, let's get started doing this work. That was, that is the intent of this report. Not to, uh, you know, be omniscient about these things. So um, I, I, I know that's, I, I, no, I, I mean, I guess so are we- I when I say that, but I think that that has to be the way we deal with it, so. I mean, are we asking for somebody, like, are we asking for the council to approve it or, or anything? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think absolutely. So. And, and this is, this is another thing that's got to go into our discussion about, you know, ongoing discussion with the charge is, is, you know, here is this thing that, that, you know, has a lot of time and effort and public input, which I know you're unhappy about, but has been happening. Not unhappy. So not, <laughs> really? not you, not oh. you, not you, you, the so. town council. Oh, um, sure, okay. You know, oh. so, you know, deal with this or don't, it's your peril. Um, um, yeah, what I imagine, and and we'll, we'll think about this together, um, is that, yeah, we're gonna just get on the agenda with the town council or the TSO, I'm not sure which is, the most appropriate, and probably town council in this case, and offer it as a res as a public resolution or uh, whatever the appropriate um, process is. Eve, actually, Chris was going to say something earlier. Yes, you was. Yeah, but I was I, distracted as I was waving my hands around. Chris, I think there's still work that can be done on the maps. The text is pretty much done, but the maps are still in flux and PVPC did as much as they could given the amount of time and money that they had, but you now can choose to make changes, additions, subtractions or whatever to the map of proposed pedestrian and bicycle links. So that yeah, is something- That was what I'd hope to work on tonight. Um, and I, I don't know who's, who, who chairs these things, but he seems to always run out of time. Eve. Yeah, in my opinion, um, we've been waiting for a year and a half to get sort of the, the data so that we could effectively work on. And it would actually be good for us to take that map out to the stakeholder group. So to the, you know, Mass Bike, to the Stavros Center, to, I don't know, um, low income advocates um, and sort of say, does this route make sense? Do these routes make sense? Um, and not just do it, just you guys. That would be my opinion um, before that, it, and, and just do it with a map. I agree that don't mess with the text, although there are two typos that need to get corrected in the text that I know of. Um, but other than that, um, I would, I still, I think yeah. it'd be good to get the map, the map out. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't know if, if uh, because my, my anxiety gets it done um, that I would flip that on its head a little bit, saying, you know, here, here is, here is what we know. Here's what we can do, and when it time comes time to implement, you town council figure out what, how to engage the stakeholders that you're preventing. Uh, I mean, this, this gets back to the issue of, of how town council wants us to interact with stakeholders, um, and um, you know, I'd like to, I'd like this to be an impetus to say, look. Here's the thing. Here's what we've done. We're going to give it to you to be approved or to accept whatever you want to do with it. And the way it works is to, 
you know, this next step. When we implement it, you need to do this with stakeholders. That's that's what I would suggest um, and hope that we, we end up doing. Bye, Chris. So, uh, so uh, I mean, maybe that's a good question for Darcy because one, you know, Darcy is a council member and she's also the chair of the TSO. Yeah. And so the TSO is meeting right now, by the way, but um, yes. I mean, maybe that can be, <laughs> so, maybe that could be something we could check in with the, just with Darcy as a first, like take yeah, it and in. I'm, and so I'm looking forward to checking in with, with the completed, with what we can call final. Um, so we say, here it is, you know, we're, we're ready to, we're ready to, ready to rock. Um, so, um, so one, two, oh, we're so, still over slow quorum. I, I see faces disappearing. It, it, so can what, we, um, what, page, what, what page is the official, like, it puts everything together map? I, I get a little bit confused because there's so many different maps. But didn't um, Amber, she sent the, a map as a separate attachment, I think. She, oh, she, she did. did, but each yeah. map does something different. Yeah. But the one that you are looking for, Eve, in the report, if just to know where it is in the report, it is. Uh, so here, here are the, the maps. Numbers. Oh, Guilford sharing it. Yeah, it's it's the last thing before Appendix B. So it's like that. There's the pedestrian so no, map this, and the this, bicycle this, map. Is that is it those two, Guilford? This is the pedestrian map here. It is the bike okay. and walking networks, bicycle and pedestrian plan. There's a final walking. So, yeah, so this, that, that, okay. You're getting closer, that, that looks like it. And there's uh, the, level of, the level of it, service. It's page 74. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Can we get down to- Wait, where did you get those tabs? <laughs> I have it set up so I can do this. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, that's the plan. Um, and then this is, oh, I got the final bike up here twice. So I, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Ber Bernie couldn't be with us tonight because I would want him to, to, to be able to sort of uh, poke us and look at this with us and, and poke us and, about so we could. I mean, uh, since this was one of the main items on the agenda, is this something that we could discuss in more depth on the 17th? Because we're, we're already, gonna, we're, we're we're already to, at 10, we're, to, <laughs> we're at 10 to 7. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we just, I mean, when I had looked at the agenda before the meeting, I know we got, you know, on the university drive discussion, but it seemed like this was one of the major items. So it was, yeah, it was intent. That's my, exactly. that was my intention, but so. I was finding value in, um, and so that um, uh, for, for Dar, I thought for Darcy to overhear a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah. But, that, that Let me just joking. go down. Sorry, just a quick picture on this. Can we go down to the Pomeroy Lane? Because I wonder, with the town's acquisition of the golf course, <laughs> if that changes anything down there. Sorry. The town doesn't currently own the golf course. It doesn't, but it will do very shortly, right? Um, well, it's I, been I, like I very think... shortly for a very long time. But... <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to... This is the bike and... It, yeah, I was just curious if we included um, Pomeroy Lane going out that way as, you know, in need of a, because uh, it would be, you know, accessing a green space eventually. So, so what I'm going to, I'm going to uh, yeah, suggest okay. that we put off the marking this up until the 17th, as, as you say, Tracy, and I'm going to ask that, that we all look at this and figure out where we want to put our marks. Yeah. Sorry, Guilford, we're going to have to postpone that exercise until, um, until next time, but um, the um, and, and what I was going to do instead in these last uh, few minutes was to answer that question. That's an interesting question, and um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so that's it. And so along those lines of answering that question and not doing the marking up, uh, one of the things that we realized uh, when we were talking about the Mill Lane uh, intersection, in fact, because that came hard on the heels. Of of the um, the proposal to um, or or the the approval of money to improve Groff Park was that where there are changes you know oh hey this the traffic is going to change and we really do need to look at the important nodes in the in the traffic network around those changes okay so now we own or will come to own and 
turned mostly into a solar farm, if I recall, um, this, this piece of property that is at this intersection, this very intersection that is getting a lot of attention right now. So I'm sorry, Guilford, I interrupted. I just wanted to keep things going along. So you were saying. Oh, no, no, it's just, this is, we, we don't own, we don't own the golf course yet. Um, no, but we will. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty fait accompli, no? Uh, we don't own the golf course yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And actually, they're going to have two two areas of solar farm, right? Basically, yes. just up around that uh, picnic sign, and then off to the left, the far left is going to be solar. So. Uh, it's more to the more to the right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. So the, that green that whole that entire green spot you see where. That's actually not all the golf course. That's golf course plus extra land. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yeah. Golf course plus wetland, yeah. No extra. <laughs> I wouldn't call it wetland. A lot of it's nice high. I mean, we actually have a sewer line which runs from East Hadley Road down that green strip all the way down to the golf course. Mm. There's actually a sewer line and a easement and actually a road that runs through there. So, and then there's conservation land that ties into it and um yeah other protected land that's why it's such a big weird shape yeah i'm just of hoping to go fishing there sometimes <laughs> okay <so. Yeah. laughs> and even now you know the sewer so close to it even with the sewer so close yeah i yeah. trust amos not to overflow it yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> since i've been here yeah. we've only had one release down there <laughs> only <laughs> one <laughs> makes a good fertilizer it was right. big in too. Right. So, uh, can can you bring up the uh, the network map there, Guilford? Uh, First, we, to look at while we now that we've well, answered this, that. Well, this is the. Um, this is. Let's see. Or can we maybe talk about this next time? I mean, I'm. We, yeah, we Kim, will. Yeah, I know, but just we'll, Kim we'll isn't here. I just, I just wanted to. Uh, yeah. Okay. I just wanted us to get familiar with it. it you know, we don't have time to really work on it. Um, but it would be okay. I think it'd be good to, to, to look at it, practice a little bit, get us, get remind, you know, I mind myself what it feels like. So this is the bike and ped base map. So they all have different meanings. The level of stress was the one that we wanted to make some corrections to because we didn't kind of agree with some of their, their stress. Yeah. Can we talk to you about that? Um, at some point, Guilford, because that partly informed our thinking about our six tier level of stress idea. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. And there's, there's, um, uh, I mean, this, this is an analysis that, that, that is uses their, their, their decision, their version of the distress, the, the stress matrix, the, that matrix that they had here. This yes. plugged in those numbers and just the colors popped out. And you're saying there's some mistakes. I don't, I don't remember that, but maybe I fell asleep at that point. I do like oh. that Mill Valley is red. And that's probably just <laughs> the size of the potholes. Well, <laughs> no, Mill Valley is much better now. Uh, not I remember mostly. when there was a 5K race there around, like basically running around the potholes. And I mean, it's much, <laughs> it's much better. Yeah, you get the whole 5K just going around the potholes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this, I mean, this is wildflower here, this red line. Yeah. And and they marked it high stress, but there's sidewalk, there's the roads wide there. It's a neighborhood. It's not a high speed right. area. That was one we were. Well, I think there's a neighbor or two who might disagree with a high speed area, but yes. Well, it's not. It's wide and it. Yeah, it's no, fine. sure. Yeah. They based it on speed posted speed limits. Uh, not actual speed count or speed size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this is um, this is the crash analysis map. Great. Yeah, that Can I ask you a random question about the level of stress map? <laughs> yep. So why is the very northern end of East Pleasant orange instead of red? Of East Pleasant. Mm -hmm. That's another. That's another oddity in this. 
Because they dropped the speed limit right there, right? Well, it drops close. It doesn't drop. Oh, no, it's there. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Not, but not if you've ever way. walked on that stretch, it's not safe. No. Well, see, that's the difference between using their their criteria versus if you wanted to use like real criteria. <laughs> Ouch. Like actual actual speeds or actual traffic studies, yeah. that type of thing, versus uh -huh. just this is the posted speed. Um, well, I mean, we have the ability to edit the map a little bit now. Yeah, well, we, so that's part of what we want to do. Right. Well, we want to post the maps they gave us, then we want to give the revise do the revised maps, and these okay. are our maps. That's what we got. Mm -hmm. It right. right. Yeah. And we, yeah, they didn't want us to change their map. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't want to change your maps too, because the um, the uh, the process that the, their analysis is described, and it's you know it's fair. It says you know we didn't walk the street. What we did is we took the speed limit and the width uh -huh. and, and and that's what we plugged in and this is what comes out of that um and you know this sort of is similar to the discussion about um you know when we have to implement a piece you know this is really just a starting point because uh, that's all we had the money for <laughs> and and we do have the gis layers now right so we can it can be edited in house and just yes. updated yes mm. great okay and then, I mean, yet, like Aaron said, this is where you start. And then if right you now. disagree with something, we go out there and we, we verify everything and say, well, well, no, this should be this or that. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Great. Well, so, yeah, we according, to our, uh, according to our, you know, if we're doing our six level <laughs> prioritization plan matrix, then probably one of the things we'd want to do is recategorize this according to those six categories at some point. Yeah. That, yeah, a different project, and it takes two more colors than we've got here. So, I I, I can I can get use some MSGIFT students though to help. There you go. <laughs> so, um, okay. I'd love yeah, to know so the, how the, the one that we're looking at then um, is the one that's called. That's the biking walking network. So the last one. Oh, the yeah. last one. Right. Oh, that's sorry, the just like, that we're, where we are, are putting our pencils to uh, create the networks because they're these ones. Actually, I'm looking at them. I, I think Eve, did they get a lot of our notes already? They did get a lot of our notes before, but then we had a couple little things that they didn't add to it. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you remember, Aaron, but there was one day we were like, okay, let's do this crash, like last add everything we can. But yep. we all got too tired and we only did half the town. Yeah. Isn't that road off Northeast Street a dirt track? How is that yellow? Northeast Street? Yeah, like right. Uh, I mean, I'm pointing at my screen. Down, down, <laughs> down, 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 down. Down, no, no, down, Where? down, down, down. Keep going down. Oh, this? Going, that, that, yeah, that's a yeah, dirt that, track. It is. <laughs> it's not a road. It's not really a road. That was the, some other things. Like, this isn't a road. Yeah. This is that. not a road. Uh, right. These well, I mean, it, it's certainly a, it's yellow probably because it's where the cops sit, but that's about it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, there's like six roads right here that right. don't exist. So it's okay to correct those because I mean, those, those <laughs> would have, I don't know what, what, uh, if that was uh, um, um, something that the GIS, you, you know, get coded as a road. And no, so it got into their work automatically. It's it's just the person that was running the who was doing it. That's how they, they picked them up. And they show Rolling Ridge going all the way from East Pleasant to North Pleasant. Right. Which doesn't. How are we going to get those? Those those are important th fixes. No, those are easy ones to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, how, how are we going to do them though? So that's something um, that we that we need to sit down to do, or is that? Well, when we mark all these up, we'll just mark them all up, and then I'll give them to somebody, and then I'll have them just work through it. And... Okay, so we'll do the markup, and then you'll work through it. Okay. But like, for example, if some of the colors are on things that aren't like, you must have a base road layer, right, Gilford, that you're using. So couldn't we just like exclude anything that's not actually on the road? if it's all level of service on the roads that are recognized as roads. Yes. I mean, we could just immediately like exclude all those other ones. But is that so. the markup that we have to do? Is that what you're- No, suggesting? no, you, you need to do the other markups. Okay. 
I mean, you can fix the road layer is what I'm saying. Yes. So great. Yeah. And so I mean, we wild, can fix wild, the colors. Wildwood Cemetery is marked in there too. Yeah. <laughs> As a road, I guess. Yeah, yes. So. With oh, low yeah, stress. Right. Oh, it's, it's a great not place stressful. To... <laughs> so. well, I, I mean, if you're sitting around in the ground, it's not really stressful. Did they, so did they use how how are all those roads? Were they just like from an aerial from an aerial? Anyway, uh, it's some won't... some data that you met. I mean, that oh, PVPC has. Interesting. OK, so they don't have our latest GIS. They didn't have our up to date GIS at that point. I'm, I'm surprised. We're well, a member they... after all. Uh, they were all, I mean, they were told where it is and how to get it. I think they just use what they have. Got it. And, yeah. yeah, you could always share, I guess, back. But, but yeah. Gilford, um, seriously, there's a, we have 16 um, MS students in the GIST program this year, and they're just in the process of figuring out what their internships are going to be that they're required to do. So um, this could easily be, you know, a project that you get a master's student to help with. Okay. But what, we would they, we would well, we would we probably want later. a description a description relatively soon to get out to the students. Ah. Can I just ask this for is... a GIS grunt? <laughs> no, because I mean you can, but then you Only might have GIS to pay them. know what that means though. <laughs> But um, I don't think Paul would understand real that. life GIS experience. I've been a GIS grunt. I spent a summer editing transit routes. Yeah, um, so so ju just by the way, Eve, I I've had some experience with um, interns in town hall and it's gone very well. Um, uh, they, they in fact, one of them worked in town hall after he graduated for a number of years. Um, it works and went so well. So that, I think that's an excellent idea, but um, um, I think we, we need to be clear about what they're going to be doing. What, what, and, and I don't know, Guilford, if the, uh, the process is in place to supervise, to, for you to take on the additional responsibility to, to, to um, supervise them. I don't know how all of that works, uh, but may, maybe you'll let us know. We, we take interns on all the time. Okay. Interns are actually easier than employees. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, okay. I was I was suggesting this because this would be a pretty high, you know pretty high qualified, highly qualified intern. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that would be great. Only the best come from UMass. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's it's, a ma <laughs> it's the master's program in GISP as opposed to like no, just an right. undergrad who's taken exactly. a course or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. of course, yeah. And they're required to have a work internship to get their master's degree. Got so it. Could be, you know, yeah. It could be a win-win situation. <laughs> so, so. Exactly. So, get Bruce, you've been very quiet this evening. Well, I'm waiting for my cue. <laughs> oh, so can... Can we, um, because we are already after seven, can we like finish up soon? I hope. Um, Shall I move yeah. to uh, adjourn? Well, uh, wait, so, well, not that fast. <laughs> I guess, so one thing, Aaron, um, you have this thing here on, about the status of the tax charge. And it seemed from our last meeting, like that we had worked on the charge and you had incorporated comments and had a new draft, but that we were looking for feedback from the town manager before proceeding further which i yeah. thought was a really wise choice instead of us continuing to spend our energies just to see what feedback we get um but we haven't received feedback yet is that correct well and, and i i have been in communication with paul and he he has promised and on the on the strength of that promise and and some conversations that i've had with darcy um i'm thinking that we're still that doing our work what we're doing here and so we have things to present as as the um, as the as the wheels turn um and and making that consideration um i mean two things one is is i think we've gone really far with it with the charge as it is and there's not much that we can change without knowing more and I'm trying to get to that more it, right. that what we need to know and um, so I'm, I'm not hiding anything and, and I, I try not to avoid dealing with it because it is sometimes very uncomfortable. But um, no, I think, I think 
Uh, I'm hopeful, as I am every week, that there'll be something to do and something to say about that. Um, the only thing that, that I, I meant to offer earlier um, is that uh, the TSO, oh, uh, everybody saw the uh, your note, Tracy. Right. I hope. And, yeah, and I want to, I mean, I, I hope they opened up the, the link there. I don't need to, I don't think we need to talk about it much, but just to see it there really as um, it is an expression, I'm, I'm taking it as an expression of um, uh, certain ideas that are developing on the TAC, on the TSO. Um, and the TSO about the TAC, right? Or something. Yeah. So, yeah. so basically, really, the, 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 the thumbnail sketch that I would take away from it is that the TSO is telling the TAC that, no, you're not going to do parking. Well, I'm cool with that um, at some level. Um, I mean, I guess the reason I sent the comment is I'm not, I mean, the TSO, it's town services and outreach and a lot of what they're, if you look at their charge, a lot of it has to do with like day to day business of the town. Right. You know, and I mean, I, I would never think that we would want to get involved and we've had discussions about this previously about, you know, very specific details about parking. Um, but I do, I do, I I mean, I do think, it, you know, if we look at our charge, parking is in there. And I think from like a larger perspective, like there are some, I know that the TSO and the council are the keepers of the public way, but that it is still useful, I think, just from coming from our perspective to maybe add in terms of the, on the policy level or, you know, on like, for example, you know, they were talking in that memo about criteria that they would use for making parking decisions. And it seemed like there were some criteria which I think are important that hadn't, they hadn't considered. And I think that, you know, um, the, you know, the authors there, they had said, well, the TAC is just a group of volunteers, right? But we're actually an appointed member body of people who have shown like a certain amount of expertise and knowledge about transportation issues. And with that background, you know, we may have insights that would be helpful to decision makers. Yeah, so, um, and so, so that, I mean, we, we may want, I mean, yeah, I oops. could make that argument individually, but I think as a tack too, you know, there were some things that I thought that could deserve. We should respond to. Well, possibly. So that, that, I mean, it, yeah. would, it could be yeah. a tack discussion about it. I did think the, um, the language is rather dismissive, but yeah. Um, <laughs> a bit. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the response, well, so I mean, in, in, in a way that, <laughs> feels like a response to what we've sent because um, many of the points that we've made that we're very clear about, um, the authority that we expect, the, 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 um, the uh, interfacing with the public that we would expect right. to be involved in, the, the types of things that we're moving along, those are mentioned, those are all kind of hinted at there or suggested or, or outright stated. Um, and, um, and, and, Related to parking, that's not what they want, and, and oh. so at face value, that's what it is. It's just about you know, uh, townwide parking is not the TAC's responsibility. Okay, um, what is in between the lines? Um, uh, I, I don't know. No, I don't. I, I don't but, know how to respond. But to I that. also guess. Hopefully. I mean. Just because we're taking, I mean, I think like the TSO meeting, right, it's happening now. And I was thinking of even going over to public comment. I mean, I could say that, you yeah. know, we, we haven't discussed it if we wanted to have a response as a TAC. Well, but I guess, so, I mean, my well, general response individually and as a TAC member not speaking for the TAC would be that. I mean, like, for example, I was thinking about things that weren't on their list of criteria. Yeah. You know, that I think so, just so our insights response, you know, can help our insights can help with the policy. Right. Um, and, and, and that's all. So, so yeah, so I don't know what our response should be. I, I want to couch what our response is with what I learned from everybody. Um, I'm hopeful and heartened actually that the discussion that we had earlier when Darcy was still with us, right. that that's some of that will go with her into yeah, the, into I'd actually, discussion. yeah, if we so, can adjourn this meeting, yeah. I'd go over and I just, can we have that as an agenda item for the next meeting where we could talk about 
you know, TSO in the parking a little bit. And then I'll ha then I'll have to get some sort of responses as, as part of the deadline. Yes, we can. Do no, that. or just that we can decide if we wanted to. I mean, maybe. I mean, one they the TSO will have an update on, you know, what they discussed yeah. and what how it progressed, because this was just one proposal by two of the TSO members and they had many different options that they were looking at. Yeah. Um, so so the, the, the short answer is yes. And the long answer is uh, we'll have to figure out what that is. And and we'll be in touch, Tracy, certainly. So. so all right. So th thank you for that. That's oh. uh, that's OK. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that Bruce is not too upset at being interrupted for that. But I'd like to, um, but if we adjourn, I'll go over to TSO. If, okay, good. So, <laughs> so. so Bruce, go ahead. <laughs> if, unless there's anything else not to monopolize. Now, th this, is not, uh, this is not a motion that can be uh, discussed. I move to adjourn. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you, Amber. I know Bye. she's got a lot of work from this now. So. Thank you, Amber. Bye. Thank you, Amber. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.